Okay, here we go. Recording for posterity's sake. So these are all sequences, arithmetic and geometric. Once again, the formulas are all down here. If you need to find one, the top two are arithmetic. The bottom three are geometric. We'll use them as we go through. Okay, but these first problems give you the formula, the explicit formula, and they want you to just write the first five terms. So remember when you're writing terms, all you have to do is replace n with 1, 2, 3, and 4. So a sub 1, the first term is negative 2 times 1 plus 3, which is positive 1. The second term is negative 2 times 2 plus 3, which is negative 1, and so on and so forth. The next one's going to be negative 3. The next one's going to be negative 5. The next one's going to be negative 7. Because each term is 2 less than the term in front of it. The plus 3 just tells you where to start. Negative 2 times 1 plus 3. Everything else is minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Which makes this a nice arithmetic sequence. But the 18th term, negative 2 times 18 plus 3 is uh, negative 36 plus 3, which is negative 33. So if they give you a formula and it happens to be arithmetic, you can find any term simply by replacing the n value. So here's your n, your subscript, a sub n, right there into the formula. Okay, arithmetic are pretty nice and pretty. Pretty nice and pretty. Pretty redundant. So this one is a recursive sequence. The 2 to the n, the a to the n minus 1 here, this part means instead of plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, you're going to plug in the term that goes along with the one before it. So a sub n minus 1 means the value of the previous term in a recursive sequence. So the second, oh, the first term, the first term is given to you as 4. The second term is 2 times the first term minus 2. So anytime you see this n minus 1, it doesn't mean subtract, it means the previous term. So 2 times the previous term minus 2, 2 times 8 minus 2 is 6. Okay, the third term is 2 times its previous term, minus 2. So 2 times 6 minus 2. The second term was 6. 2 times 6 minus 2 is 10. Okay, 2 times that term, 2 times 10 minus 2, is uh, 20 minus 2, or 18. And a sub 5 is 2 times 18 minus 2, or 36 minus 2, which is 34. So here you have a plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, plus 16. We're adding a bunch of different things in there. Um, so it's not geometric. It doesn't appear to be. And it is definitely not arithmetic. It's not a common adder. Common adder. Okay. So this is a recursive. Recursive sequences use the previous value in order to calculate the next one. So you need to know the sixth value in order to find the seventh, and so on and so forth. OK, now this last one, let me blow it up, because this is kind of hard to see. Blow it up. 200%. So here we have negative 1 to the k times 2 to the k plus 1. Okay, we want to find out the first, second, third, and 18th term and such. So the first term, a sub 1, is negative 1 to the first power times 2 to the first plus 1 power. Okay, negative 1 to the first power is negative 1 times 2 to the second, which is 4. Negative 1 times 4 is 
negative 4. So the first term here is negative 4. Okay, the second term, a sub 2, negative 1 squared, 2 to the 2 plus 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. Positive 1 times 2 to the 3rd is positive 8. Okay, so these type of defined sequences that have a negative value will have a negative term and then a positive term, and then a negative term and a positive term. Because when you raise a negative 1 to an odd value, you get a negative answer. Negative 1 to the third is, once again, negative 1. So negative 1 times 16 is a negative 16. Okay, so it looks like we have a times 2, times 2, times 2. So this one should be a positive 32. This one will be negative 64. Okay, just by going by the pattern, you're multiplying a previous term times 2. But the 18th term, we'll just calculate that, sort of. Negative 1 to the 18th times 2 to the 18 plus 1. So this is a positive, positive 1, 2 to the 19th. I'm going to need a calculator. Here we go. 2. I don't have a carrot times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Never mind, that's crappy. Let's use a different calculator. Here we go. Give me a calculator. 2 to the 19th power. 2 to the 19. 5, 2, 4, 2, 8, 8. Thank goodness for calculators. <clears throat> so whenever they give you a formula and you want some terms, unless it's recursive, you just plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you figure out everything. So it'll be a positive because negative 1 to the 18th is a positive 1 value. Okay, pretty straightforward, not too tough. Okay, moving on. Find the sum the sum of the first 18 terms. And this is an arithmetic sequence, correct? Correct. Okay, anytime you have a linear equation, you have yourself an arithmetic sequence. So in order to find the sum, we're going to use this equation right here. Sum of an arithmetic sequence. Anytime you want sum, you need an S equation. So we need to know how many terms. We need to know the first term and we need to know the last term. In order to use this formula, you need to fill in these three blanks. So how many terms, the first term and the last term. So how many terms, that's pretty easy. We want the first 18. The first term um, was positive 1. Negative 2 times 1 plus 3 was positive 1. Oh, it's the same as that one. The last term, the 18th term, is negative 33 from this previous problem right here. A sub 13 is negative 33. So if we want to find the sum, we apply that formula. 18 over 2 times 1 plus negative 33. We're adding up 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 3 plus negative 5 plus negative 7 plus negative 9. Adding up all those terms using this formula rather than simply adding up all of those terms. 9 times negative 32 is negative 288. 9 times 2 is 18. 9 and 3 is 27 plus 1. Yeah, 
Negative 288. Those terms add up fast. So you could find the first 18 terms explicitly if you want to, and then add them all up, or you could use the formula for the sum. Okay, remember, any time you want to add, you're using a sum formula. Okay, explicit formula for number two. So let's write down the terms for number two, four, and then six, and then 10, and then 18, and then 36, dot, dot, dot. 34? Where is my four? 34, dot, dot, dot. So we know what it said is not arithmetic. Here's plus 2, and then plus 4, and then plus 8, and then plus 16, and then plus something else. So it's not arithmetic because we don't have a common adder. But notice what do these go up by? These go up by, again, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, plus dot, dot, dot. And then these ones, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, so it never actually comes out to be anything pretty. So there might not be an explicit formula for this one. But uh, if you can find one, go ahead. I'll give you extra credit. But let's move on. Yeah, we only have so much time. Okay, given this sequence, what is the 42nd term? So the first question is, what kind of a sequence is it? Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 makes this arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. It has a common adder. So we want the 42nd term. Here is your formula for finding any term of an arithmetic sequence. So we want the 42nd term, that's your n. n is 42, 42nd term. We need the first term and we need the common difference. So the first term is clearly negative three, there's a sub one. And what's the difference in between every term? positive 4. So into our formula we go a sub 42. The 42nd term is the first term plus the difference <coughs> times 42 minus 1. Okay, there's your formula again. First term, difference, how many terms are we talking about? What is the number of terms? So negative 3, oh, this is a 4, isn't it? Erase, pencil, four. The first thing you do is parentheses, always parentheses. 42 minus one is 41. The next thing we do is multiplication. Four times 41 is 164. And the last thing we do is addition, 161. So the 42nd term of this arithmetically increasing series is 161. Okay, parentheses first, multiplication second, addition last. Okay, addition last. Here you have the word sum. So once again, we're gonna use the sum formula. Okay, so the sum formula once again is the number of terms over two, times the first term plus the last term. So how many terms? 32 terms. What's the first term? 4 minus 1, which is 3. So the first term is 3. What is the 32nd term? 4 minus 32, or negative 28. Okay, so if they don't give you the terms of the sequence, you need to calculate them using either this formula that they give you or the C 
sequence formula that happens to go with the arithmeticness. Okay. So how many terms were there? There were 32 terms. The first term was positive 3. The last term was negative 28. Thirty-two over two is sixteen. Negative twenty-five is three plus negative twenty-eight. Sixteen twenty-fives is four hundred. Four twenty-fives is one hundred. There are four four twenty-fives here. Negative four hundred. Yes. Oh, oh, wait. Let's don't skip number six. Lo siento mucho. I went right over number six. Okay, this is your summation formula or summation notation. Okay, it, it means add up all these terms. So we want to find starting at term number two, uh, term number six. So 2 times 2 minus 1 plus 3 times 3 minus 1 plus 4 times 4 minus 1 plus 5 times 5 minus 1 plus 6 times 6 minus 1. And we stop. So you first replace k with this starting value. You stop once you replace k with that ending value. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5 times 4 is 20, plus 6 times 5 is 30. So 2 and 6 is 8, 8 and 12 is 20, 20 and 20 is 40, 40 and 30 is 70. Okay, this means add up all the terms. Okay, find the sum. This is the summation, the Greek letter sigma. Okay, so it means add up all the terms. Replace K with this. Stop when you replace K with that. And then add them all up. Okay, no skipping number six. All right, what else we got? Back to arithmetic. What is the first term when the 15th term is 62 and it has a difference of 11? Okay. This is your n value. This is your a sub n value. And this is, of course, your difference. So because this is arithmetic, we're going to plug it into the formula. The a sub n is equal to the first term plus the difference times the number of terms minus 1. Okay, the subscript is always your n value. So 15 is your subscript, that is your n value. So let's solve this. 62 <coughs> equals a sub 1 plus 11 times 14. So 11 times 14 is calculator 11 no, clear 11 times 14 154 thank you calculator and subtracting 154 from both sides calculator 62 minus 154 negative 92. You're so smart. So the first term would have been negative 92 if the uh, 15th term was 62 and it had a difference of 11. So we're adding 11. Negative 92 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11 plus 11 eventually got us to 62. Okay. Now here are the most difficult one. We know these terms. We need to first find uh, the first term and the difference. 
Okay, so we need to figure out what the difference of these terms are if you know two terms. So we know the 12th term was negative 10. We know the 31st term was negative 48. So we can do negative 48 minus negative 10. Okay, the values divided by the terms themselves. 31 minus 12. Okay. The 31st term minus the 12th term divided by 31 minus 12. This is a plus negative 48. This is negative 38, 19. So these have a difference of negative 2. So once we know the difference and a term, we can use our general formula. This is your n value. And it doesn't matter which one you use. This one is your a sub n value. So let's plug it into our formula. Negative 10 equals a sub 1 plus, in this case, minus 2 because it's a negative difference. Minus 2, that's a 2. times 12 minus 1. Once you know the difference, you can use either one of these two terms to figure out what the first term was. So according to PEMDAS, we have to do our parentheses. 81 minus 2 times 11, a sub 1. Come up here. Negative 10 equals a sub 1 minus 22. Adding 22 to both sides means we had a first term of 12. That's an a. So once we know that, we know the first term was 12. And we have a difference of negative 2. So the second term has to be 10. And then the third term has to be 8 and so on and so forth. So we just want the first three terms. So we have 12 is the first, 10 is the second, and 8 is the third, because they all have a negative 2 difference. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Okay, fantastic arithmetic sequences. Use these formulas. These are your arithmetic sequence formulas. One for the sum, one for a term or the general formula, if you like. Okay, let's see what's next. On to the back. Summation. So summation notation, we need to first draw our big sigma. Okay, let's start at, um, let's start at one. And this is one, two, three, four, five. We end at five. Okay? Like this one, if there's a plus dot dot dot, we know it will never end, so that should be infinity. But because there's only five terms, it will end. So let's first do with the two, four, six, eight, ten. Notice that each of those are just twice your one, two, three, four, five. So when you're trying to write a formula, you can take and see what happens to one, two, three, four, five. In this case, you multiply all of them by ten. But notice we have a negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, just like we did on that first page over here. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we need to include this. This is the term that changes your positives to negatives and negatives to positives. And because the first term is negative, we're going to leave it to an odd power. So odd first. Had your first term been positive, this would have been an n plus 1 to make the first term positive. Okay. That is summation notation. It has a big sigma, and you have a formula to generate each of these terms up there. Okay, so same thing for number 12. Here we have a big sigma. Let's start at 1 again. And because it has your dot, 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 we're going to stop at never infinity. Stop at infinity. 
So we know we have a fractional fractional power thing here. So you have a numerator that's generated and a denominator that's generated. So looking at the numerators, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 those are just your n values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's just n with nothing else around it. Now the bottom we have to figure out. Do you recognize two, five, 10, 17? Maybe, maybe not. So let's look at 2 and 5 and 10 and 17 and see if we can distinguish a pattern. So 2 to 5 is plus 3, 5 to 10 is plus 5, 10 to 17 is plus 7. So this is not a linear pattern because it's not a first common. Let's look at the second patterns. 3 to 5 is plus 2. 5 to 7 is plus 2. So notice here you have a common, okay, which means we have a quadratic type relationship. Okay, if these were all the same, we have a linear relationship. The second one's all the same, you have a quadratic. If the third one's all the same, you have a cubic, and so on and so forth. So 2, 5, 10, 17, they don't look very quadratic to me, do they? root 2, root 5, root 10, root 17, no, no. But what if we did this? Does this look more quadratic to you? 1, 4, 9, 16. Okay, these are perfect squares. These are something raised to the second power. 1 to 2, 4 to 5, 9 to 10, 17. So these are all plus ones, plus one, plus one, plus one. So we can generate one, four, nine, sixteen simply by squaring whatever n value we have. So n of one, we square one. n of two, we square two. n of three, we square three. Only we just have to add one to each of these n squares and that gives us two, five, and seventeen. Usually this writing of the equation is the hardest part, especially if you're not so good at finding patterns and don't remember all of your um, numerical jargon there. Don't have good number sense. But that's summation notation, it never ever stops. Okay, this, 1 to 3, 3 to 9, 9 to 27, this is a geometric sequence. So geometric sequence is we need to have the first term, which is 1, and we need to find the ratio. So notice it's uh, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3, times 3. So the ratio is times 3. And if it's not so obvious, you can always divide the second term by the first term. That's always how we can find your ratio, is by dividing the second term by the first term. And then your formula, so it wants an equation, so we use an equation. It takes the first term, that's back here, here's your equation. Let's see where to go. This is the equation for any geometric sequence. needs the first term and the ratio. So we found the first term, we've uh, found the ratio 1 times 3 to the n minus 1. Okay, we can write it like this, or if you want to, we can just say 3 to the n minus 1, since multiplying it by 1 doesn't change anything. Or if you want, we can have negative 1 and then have the ratio in parentheses all of these are acceptable ways of writing this answer. First term, first term, ratio, ratio, so on. Okay, so notice this one, 64 to 32 is um, negative, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So we do the same thing, this is an arithmetic. The first term is 64, the ratio 
negative 32 over 64 is a negative one-half ratio. Okay, so with arithmetic sequences, we don't have to worry about the negative one to the power thing. We take care of that with the ratio f by itself. So a sub n is the first term times the ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay. No, you don't do 64 times negative 1 half because the negative 1 half is being raised to a power. And you always do powers before you do multiplication. So we leave it like this. You don't ever try and simplify this geometric sequence equation. Okay, don't do it. So 15, what is the 14th term of this geometric sequence? So we want a sub 14 of the previous answer. So 64 times negative 1 half to the 14 minus first power. So that's a 14. 64 times negative 1 half to the 13th. So let's go to our handy dandy calculator. Clear. Maybe on. Turn it on. There we go. Um, 2 to the 13th power. 2 carat 13 is 8192. So this is 64 times 1 over 8192 which is negative 64 over 8192. Now the question is, how much simpler can we write that? Yes, your calculator will give you a decimal, but decimals suck. We all know that. So let's try to simplify this. 64 and 8192. Let's divide this by 64. And we get 128. So this is actually negative 1 over 128. Okay. You should really have, never have any decimals in a sequence. It should always be fractional. Which your calculator can give you this decimal, but I don't know if it will take a decimal and give you this fraction. But once again, you raise this to the power, and then you multiply, and then you simplify, or reduce. How many times will that go in there? Okay, number 16. Here we have, once again, a sum. Sum. And this dot, dot, dot is an infinite sequence. So we use the infinite sum equation. From the other thing, it was the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. 1 minus the ratio. So 64 over 1 minus negative 1 half is 64 divided by 1 plus 1 half. Why did I do that? Who knows? Erase. 1 plus a half is 64 over 3 halves. And I know what you want to do. You want to put it in your calculator. But let's do this by hand. Multiply by the reciprocal. So division of a fraction is multiplication by the reciprocal. 64 times 2, 128 over 3, which can not divide prettily, but is rather 42 and 2 thirds. I believe your calculator were giving you the point six 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 six, which you should know as two thirds. So infinite geometric sequence formula. First term, one minus the ratio. So here we have it again. We have the first term. What's the first term of this sequence? 4 times 1 third to the 1 minus 1, 4 times 1 third to the 0, 1 third of the 0 is of course 1, so the first term is 4, and this is your 
ratio. So the infinite sum, because it says infinite, we'd use the infinite sum formula. 4 over 1 minus 1 third. 4 over 2 thirds is 4 times 3 halves, which is 6. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So if we added up all these terms, 4 times plus 4 thirds plus 4 ninths plus all those things, you would get Okay. So the first thing you have to do with each of these sequences is determine whether they're geometric or arithmetic. Once you determine that, you use the correct formula and you answer whatever question it happens to be. Okay. So here are all of your formulas once again. The top two are the sum of an arithmetic sequence. This is the arithmetic formula. This is how you get how many terms you have. It is the geometric formula, geometric partial sum, if you want the first 10 of them. This is geometric infinite sum. Okay, doke. Doke, oak. That's all. That's a long one. <laughs>